Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today's going to be kind of a part one of a two-part storyline. Uh, even though they are separate storylines, they came out in the same book, but not the same issue. Uh, I'll kind of explain a little bit here. Back when Spider-Man 3 was coming out, uh, they were doing this storyline in the comic books called Back in Black, and it was kind of Peter Parker reacting to what happened post-Civil War to him with his identity being out there. He revealed himself to be Spider-Man. He pulled like an I am Iron Man thing and went I am Peter Parker and told the whole world, uh, you know, who he was. And that caused a lot of problems for him. And one of those problems was Aunt May being caught in the crosshairs of an assassin that was trying to kill Peter. But his spider sense warned him of danger, caused him to push himself and Mary Jane out of the way. And the bullet went into Aunt May. And after that, Peter, uh, you know, the storyline was that he was going to go darker. He was going to wear the black suit again, the cloth one, not the symbiote, uh, the cloth one. But during that time, they decided to do this book called Spider-Man Family. And in that, they would tell out of kind of major continuity stories, uh, but still kind of like a drifting continuity story of the time where Peter had the symbiote or a time right after when Eddie Brock got the symbiote. So that's what we're going to talk about today in the first issue of Spider-Man Family, because they did do like a one shot and they did a manga Spider-Man story in there. And we'll talk about that version of Venom. I think we're going to probably, I'll plan it out. I'll try to, you know, like work it out and see all the versions I got to do. But I was thinking about doing Venoms from alternate universes uh, like manga Venom uh, and other Venoms that we've seen in the comics. And I thought about doing those, like I think Poison, there was like a Peter Parker that became a character named Poison. So we might do like a week where we, you know, kind of explore the alternate versions of these characters. And of course, for those of you who want me to do the video game stuff, we will probably dedicate a week closer to the end of the year where uh, we talk about all the different Venoms from the video games as well. Because uh, I imagine, I, I kind of want to save that a little bit and do that closer to when the next Spider-Man game com comes out. But I'm thinking about it now, the game still might be like a couple years away. And so I know you guys don't want to wait that long for that episode. So I'll try to work something out. Uh, but in this one, you know, we're going to talk about the storyline from the first issue, which is written by Sean McKeever. He actually wrote both these stories. The second one we'll talk about in the next episode. But in this one, it's I, I don't know what else to call it. I kind of want it to be part of the Versus series. So we're going to call it the Symbiote versus uh, the Sandman. And uh, that's what happens in this. Uh, it's the symbiote fighting Sandman and not Eddie Brock or, you know, or Peter Parker or anything like that. But it is during the time that Peter Parker had the symbiote. And basically he's, you know, starts off the book and he's like trying to take down these guys at the docks. And Sandman is there and he's like, all right, let's sit back. Spider-Man doesn't know exactly what we have yet. Let him capture those guys. And then we'll come in and, and finish the job once those guys get taken away. So let's just kind of sit back and chill. And Spider-Man comes in with the black costume. And Sandman's like, that's not the Spider-Man I know. Like I fought Spider-Man before that's not him and they're like that's him haven't you seen the news like he's you know he's he's back and he's got a new costume and and sandman's like uh yeah okay i don't think that's really him though and so peter you know takes out the goons webs them up and then there's like this thing revealed like there's like a crate that says like a, you know meteor from somewhere and the suit sees that but peter doesn't so as peter's trying to web away the suit's trying to pull him back and then they end up you know offsetting each other and falling into like the hudson river and uh and so spider-man comes out all smelly and stuff and he's like what's with the suit like is it glitching out what's going on because remember he still thinks it's a piece of technology from uh from battle world he doesn't know it's like an actual living alien being yet so he goes back to his apartment when he gets in there the suit kind of dissipates off him kind of slinks away for a minute goes back on the, the like the nightstand or it leans over his chair or something like that like his desk chair and his uh, landlord knocks on the door and I love that scene because it's so well done but it's totally like a nod also to kind of like the movies even though it's not uh, like I don't think his landlord's a male in this one I think it's female uh, but they, they're sitting there looking and uh, he says because I'm trying to go off memory here but I think it's female landlord and he's like she's like Parker and he goes rent and she's like yes it's late and he goes uh thursday <laughs> and she's like what's that smell and he goes i'm cooking <laughs> and it's like this like really quick beep 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 joke um and i i don't know i loved it i thought it was like handled really well the humor there is really well done and uh, and then so peter's like all right i'm gonna go to bed and then he can't sleep so he gets back in the costume and he's like let's go out and like you know um you know look around see if we can find any other trouble to like you know get mixed up in he's like i just can't sleep tonight but the suit kind of wants to know what's up with that meteor. And so it, you know, and it's like, it's kind of in a way narrating the story where it's like home, like where is home for me? Is it back out in space? Uh, is it, you know, is it where I was from? Cause when it, the book starts off, it has this great, like a, uh, like quick origin where it's like uh you know the suit's like i'm free or i'm home and it's like on clintar and then it's like and then i was in jail and it shows battle world and it's like but then i got free and but now i have a host and am i home now on this planet and so that's where it's 
It's kind of the suit figuring out. And that's why I like the story a lot, because it's more suit focused. It's more about the symbiote and what it wants and what its needs are. And it just wants to know about this meteor, something about it, this meteorite that landed on Earth, you know, like in the 1800s in Alberta, Canada. Uh, you know, which is cool because I'm like, oh, I wonder if that ties into Wolverine somehow because Wolverine was probably up in that area in, in that time period. So I'm kind of like, oh, that'd be great to, to figure that out. But uh, so, yeah. So anyway, the suit is like, I want to go back and, and check out that meteorite. So it knocks Peter Parker out and leaves him on a rooftop. And it's just like, all right, you know, he should be fine here. He's like, they kind of slinks him into the, like a corner, like in the shadows. And, uh, and, it, and it's like, all right, I'm going to go off and try to figure this out. And so remember the suit at this point hasn't fully bonded to Peter. Um, it's warming up to him for sure. And this is one of those stories that it's kind of showing it warm up to him a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but it did resist him in this moment because it wants to learn something that, you know, it wants to, I guess, keep from Peter or just wants to know about it for itself and maybe share it with Peter later. Who knows? Uh, cause you know, the, the motivation, of the symbiote kind of change with most writers that, that write it. And they're not very clear here. All we know is that the symbiote wants to learn about this meteorite. So it knocks Peter Parker out, leaves him on a rooftop as it's going to find this meteorite going back to the scene of the crime from the beginning. On its way there, it runs into Black Cat. And Black Cat's like, hey, spider, like, what's up? And, you know, the suit hisses at her because it's like, I don't like you and I don't want anything to do with you, so I'm going to go away now. And she's like, hey, the hissing thing, that's kind of my thing. Like, what are you doing? And then it, like, you know, slinks away and she's like, okay, that that was weird. And then what ends up happening is, like, you know, just like a quick, fun little cameo because they bring Black Cat in later in the book, too, for another side story with, with Hellcat, I believe. And uh, and so the suit goes away and it finds, goes back to the crime, uh, the crime scene from the opening and it sees... Sandman there with his goons and now they're picking up where those other goons left off and where they were captured and they're like all right let's let's get this done let's get this project done let's find this meteorite and so the suit goes in and attacks Sandman and that's pretty much the bulk of the ending of this book is them two fighting and it's pretty cool because you know the symbiote moves around like watery kind of substance and liquidy kind of looking and Sandman is just like coarse sand and so they're going at each other and at this point Sandman thinks it's Spider-Man. He's like, all right, well, the guy's convinced me Spider-Man has a new costume, but uh, right now there's no human host in it. So the suit can do things and move in ways that a human wouldn't allow it to move. And so uh, so Sandman's kind of taken aback by how, you know, this thing is moving and avoiding his, his blows. And then when he, like, drops a bunch of crates on it, the symbiote pours around the crates. Like, it wasn't smashed. No one died because it has no human host. And it pours around the crates and reforms and then goes inside Sandman. And then from the inside, like after they exchange a few blows and, and everything like that uh it goes inside sandman and then expands like a balloon and it and pops and basically sends sandman into numerous pieces and grains of sand all over the place uh, to the point where he can't uh pull himself back together uh, so easily uh because he's spread out everywhere they're on a dock i'm sure some of the grains went into the water and stuff so the symbiote basically beats Sandman single-handedly. And uh, and again, like I said, the reason some of these stories exist and why they use these characters was because of Spider-Man 3, the movie. I think uh, Sean McKeever probably got word from Marvel like, hey, try to write a, a story about Peter Parker and the symbiote, uh, you know, bonded, but then also try to squeeze Sandman in there. It's It screams of one of those kind of stories. But what I like about it is that he did a pretty good job with it. And we have seen moments like that in the comics uh, before where, you know, the suit kind of goes off on its own. It's trying to figure things out and stuff. In this case, it just wanted to to find this meteorite so when it does at the end it it's reading the like the description oh it fell on earth it you know it's from an unknown source we don't know where it is and it's kind of holding the piece even though it's kind of broken now from the battle and it's kind of holding it just going like it is this my home like is it, this could this be where i come from uh, it feels familiar somehow and uh, and i i like that i thought that was like a nice touching little uh moment for the symbiote and shows that it can have the same type of emotions that humans do and why it finds humans to be such a great uh, compatible host for it uh, is because it shares like these emotions especially this suit in particular which was banished from Clintar originally I mean I know they changed the the things nowadays uh, with the new storylines but it was banished originally because it felt uh, because it didn't really need a host to feel and that's different than what most symbiotes are like and that's why it was banished it was it was kind of seen it, it was like deemed kind of an outcast it was like oh the, it's it's weird to us the way it thinks and feels and stuff so we're going to cast it out and it ends up in um you know i guess later on we find out in the kree hands and then from there into the beyonders hands for battle world um so yeah i'm sure there's a more of a story there to tell at, at some point one day uh, but for this you know this worked for me i like this storyline and that's why later on i think we got like a an, um who was it 
Saladin Ahmed or someone who wrote a, a, a Spider-Man annual recently where it was like the suit going off like you know without Peter Parker and doing like fighting Hammerhead or something and it was just like yeah man you're like you're way too late for this like someone's already told these stories you know and I'm sure I mean he probably already knew that story existed or maybe he didn't I don't know I feel like a lot of times when writers especially these newer writers um who were like oh I'm a big fan I'm a big fan I feel like they there's and I, and I don't expect everyone to read every single thing um but at the same time, like I said, these were Spider-Man comics that were coming out when Spider-Man 3 was coming out. And I figured if any time that would pull in a mass group of readers to read a comic, uh, it would be during like a big movie event, you know. For, you know, So I'm like, I see these writers and they're like, oh, I'm a big fan. I've read a lot of stuff. I've done a lot of research and things. Uh, and then they just do things that have already been done. And it's like, uh, so again, I don't know. I, I'm not speaking for the guy. I don't know if he already read the story or hadn't read the story. If he hadn't, you know, I understand he's probably thought like, hey, I got a pretty neat story here. But also that falls on the editor. Editors, and I feel like sometimes these editors are people who don't read a lot or haven't read a lot growing up. They just kind of end up in these roles and in these jobs. And, uh, it, and or they just are like, hey, you know what? It has been done before, but so is everything in comics. So maybe we'll put a new spin on it. But I didn't find that new Spider-Man annual to put that much of a new spin. It just pretty much told the same story. It just swapped out Hammerhead for, for Sandman. And that was pretty much all it really did, uh, in my opinion. Um, but uh, this one, the Sean McKeever one, I thought it did a lot because it added heart to the symbiote itself and it gave it a mission and it gave it something to you know like show that it's longing for something that it has something that it cares about which is to know where its home is and and then at the end coming to terms with you know what maybe this is just home for now so it gets peter parker it returns him to his apartment and then it lays him back in bed and peter's like getting up and the suit remains where it was like slinked over the uh you know his chair or whatever his desk chair and it's like all right maybe this is just home for now and peter's like well i don't know what happened to me i got hit in the head but you know thankfully the suit or something brought me back home i don't know how i ended up here maybe it was all a dream but to either way i'm glad i'm home and then that's kind of mirroring the sentiment of the symbiote as peter parker saying it so yeah overall i thought this was good i liked it i think um uh, babette was uh, that's his last name was the artist on this and uh, he did a great job i thought the art looked very clean uh, you know i couldn't i don't have a physical copy of this book anymore i used to when it came out but i have the digital one so hopefully the images were popping up uh you know chances are i'll edit them in uh, so you can kind of see what the artwork looks like uh, but this book was a lot of fun and if you haven't read it i highly recommend picking up the uh, you know the, the digital copy at least because i don't know if they reprinted this either i, I want to say they did a spider-man family trade paperback like a little digest size one but i can't remember and i'm pretty sure it's long out of print because like i said this came out like around 2007 2008 era and uh so that's yeah it's it's been a while so i would just recommend picking up the comiXology version sometimes you can find it on sale for 99 cents but otherwise it's like two bucks and you get this short story and a bunch of other ones as well and there's also a second issue. I think they did three or four of these issues total. And then they did like a one shot that came out before. So the next issue we're going to talk about in the next episode. And that's one where it's actually Peter Parker versus Venom. So this was Symbiote versus Sandman battle. And the next one you're going to get a battle between Peter Parker and Eddie Brock Venom. And it's one that is, you know, again, part of the continuity, part of the drifting continuity. But I thought was a really interesting battle, a really interesting fight. And I thought the stakes that were there were really great because they were very personal to Eddie Brock. And it also paints him again. Again, kind of in a heroic light and showing him being a capable journalist, which I know some of you out there are big fans of thinking that, you know, he didn't get things wrong, that he was kind of set up or things didn't, you know, or things were lied to him. And that's why he fell from grace. Um, I personally like the version where he just didn't check his sources and he just made a mistake because he was trying to like climb up. Uh, it just seems more realistic to me. It seems more like relatable in a way to where you can understand his motivations that way. Uh, but also someone, you know, being betrayed or, or set up to fall. That's also an interesting uh, avenue to go to. So we'll talk about that in the next episode because it's a lot of fun. Peter Parker versus Venom. It's it's great. It's a great little mini battle. And if you want to pick that up, that's in Spider-Man Family number two. And that's the episode we're going to, or that's the issue we're going to talk about in the next episode. But let me know what you think of this one. You know, everything we went over here. Did you like this one? If you want to talk about the Spider-Man Annual 2, we already did an episode on that. Uh, but this storyline itself, you know, let me know what you think of it. And do you have it yourself? Have you read it? Did you like it? Let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.